This is the SAU Report, a program featuring interviews with the faculty, staff, students, and alumni of Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia. Welcome to this edition of the SAU Report. I'm Nikita Martin. And I'm Monica Rasmussen. Today our guest is Dr. Paul Babbitt, Assistant Professor of Political Science here at SAU. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Babbitt. Pleased to be here. Where are you originally from? Uh, I came here from New Jersey, actually. Uh, I grew up in Fairhaven, New Jersey, and my last job before this one was at Rutgers University. Okay. Do you have a family? I have a wife and a daughter who's seven months. Okay. What is your educational background? I have a PhD in political science from Rutgers University, where I also got my master's degree. I got my bachelor's degree from Haverford College, which is in Pennsylvania. Okay, you're from New Jersey. What are some of the differences you've encountered since coming to Arkansas? Have you experienced culture shock? I wouldn't say culture shock. Um, I was, there were some differences I was expecting. I can't get a decent piece of pizza here in <laughs> Magnolia um, or a bagel. But that, those are the, the main drawbacks, I suppose. It's nice, on the other hand, being able to get anywhere you need to go in five minutes mm -hmm. and you can get everything you need in Magnolia. <laughs> what was your first impression of SAU? That's a hard question. I had many, imp I've had many impressions of SAU and since I've been here. Um, I guess my first impression of SAU was I thought the campus looked really nice. I was mm -hmm. here in April for my first visit mm -hmm. and I thought the campus looked really nice and I think that was my first basic impression. That and it's isolated and rural. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you like most about SAU and Magnolia? Um, what I think I like best about Magnolia is that it is a really nice pace of life. Mm -hmm. um, everything is relatively easy to get to and there's no traffic. <laughs> um, what I like about SAU most of all are my colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have a great department in history, political science and geography and I really am enjoying working with, with the other people in the department. I think that's so far been the best mm -hmm. thing about it here. Mm -hmm. What classes do you teach? I teach American government state and local politics, and philosophy. What inspired you to go into the teaching field? I really wasn't inspired to go into the teaching field as much as I was inspired to get a PhD in political philosophy. Um, mm -hmm. Teaching sort of goes along with that, and I really love what I do, and so I enjoy teaching because I enjoy sharing mm -hmm. the things that I do with students. What is your, first, what, what is your favorite course to teach? In the world or this semester? <laughs> well, let's say this semester. Um, oh, I like them all. They all have their, their strengths and weaknesses. I, I guess, really, if you made me answer the question, I would say philosophy. And why is that? It's the one for me that's the most fun, because there's no right answer, <laughs> which has driven the students crazy, but I enjoy that. <laughs> why did you choose the political science field? I don't know. I, it, it's, a, it's a long story. Um, I chose political science because I was interested in, when I was an undergraduate, I was interested in going into international relations. Mm -hmm. um, I have long since abandoned that, but I just found myself in political science. I found myself really enjoying political philosophy, um, and here I am. <laughs> what is your approach to teaching? I try to get students engaged in the material as best I can. Um, Typically, my classes tend to be relatively flexible and open. I have a small agenda, but I, I'm more than happy to go off the agenda if something comes up that's interesting mm -hmm. to students. We can talk about things. Um, recently, in state and local government, we talked about the Arkansas Department of Motor Vehicles. <laughs> it was relevant because we were talking about state bureaucracy, but you know. Mm -hmm. So what field would you have gone into if you hadn't chosen political science? Well, I could have gone into market research. I'm glad I'm not there. Um, if I hadn't done political science, I have no idea. I've been doing this for so long that I just... Well, what are some of the main differences between the politics of New Jersey and Arkansas? Well, this has been a real sticking point. Another thing, Arkansas didn't have an election this past Tuesday, which I, or a week ago Tuesday, which I found very... It's, to me, it's like not having Christmas. Um, in many ways, there's lots of similarities between the politics of Arkansas and New Jersey. Um, both states tend to have 
more and more competitive elections. Arkansas is more conservative than New Jersey mm -hmm. in many ways, and I guess that's, a, that's the prime, most notable difference. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess the other real difference is that New Jersey, citizens in New Jersey are much more likely to complain about things mm -hmm. than people in Arkansas seem to. If anything goes wrong in New Jersey, New Jersey citizens start just getting really angry really quickly. Here, people <laughs> seem to be much more relaxed about things, and they figure that the government will fix its problems, I guess. I'm not sure yet. Um, but uh, that's, I think, the real, the real interesting difference to me. Who are some of your contemporary political uh, influences? Political influences? Mm -hmm. I don't know that I have any. Um, in part because what I do is political philosophy. Mm -hmm. I don't really, I pay attention to what's going on in the current political world, but it's not really part mm -hmm. of what I do. Um, in terms of political philosophy, one of the people I've been studying a lot on my own and also been teaching in, in the philosophy course is Isaiah Berlin. He's been dead since, 90, since 97, I think he died, 96, 97. Mm -hmm. um, whether I would say he's an influence on me or not is, it's hard to say. Well, who are, who are your favorite political philosophers and why? Well, Isaiah Berlin is one um, because I think that he is, really understands what's at stake in political debates. Um, I think he, he's one of the few contemporary political philosophers who really tried to write in a way that was accessible to lots of people. That's why I feel I can teach him to introduction to philosophy students here. Um, some other. I did my dissertation on William Penn. I don't know whether I think he's one of my favorites or not anymore. Uh, he wasn't the world's greatest political philosopher by any stretch of the imagination, and he wasn't that great a writer, but I guess he's pretty important. Um, I tend to look a lot at the at British political philosophers, whether you know, favorite or not, I don't know. I would say I guess Isaiah Berlin's my favorite for now, but I could change my mind next week. You said you enjoyed the faculty so far. How have they made you feel welcomed? Well, when I first arrived, uh, the first three or four nights we were here, we had dinner out at somebody else's house, and that was, mm -hmm. that was really nice. Um, been invited to dinner, just people have been helpful giving advice, information about how to get along with things here. <laughs> um, it's just been, people have been very welcoming mm -hmm. in all different, any way you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Do you think SAU should hire more political science teachers? Well, yes, of course. Um, <laughs> but we need to, before that happens, I think we do need to increase the number of political science majors mm -hmm. we have. And that's really one of the things I would like to accomplish here, is get more people involved in the political science program. Um, otherwise, we don't have any real reason to hire more right. political science faculty. So you don't feel that college students are interested in politics? Um, College students here, like college students just about everywhere else I've been, are not as interested in politics as I think they should be. Why do you think that is? Why aren't they interested or why should they be interested? <laughs> Both. Um, well, I think they're not interested because our society as a whole has become less and less interested in politics. Mm -hmm. There's lots of reasons why that is. Uh, too much negative campaigning. There's a sense among many young people that politics or politicians aren't talking about things that are of concern to them or that they need to be worried about or that politicians aren't addressing their needs and that they want to and they will address those needs in other ways. But as I explain in all my political science classes, if you want politicians to address your needs, you have to make yourself mm -hmm. be a part of the political system and make sure that they know what your needs are and that you're willing to do things in order to. Politics in, in a democracy isn't about politicians and government giving things to people. It's about people asking for things from government. Um, even if that's just to be left alone. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't really specifically answer your question, but I think that's, that's a big part of it. I, I, I think in, in some ways it's very important for, ev for everyone, not just mm -hmm. political science majors, but for every student here, to know something about how our government works, because you will be dealing with the government in one way or, or another for the rest of your life. Oh, yes. Well, in, in accordance with that question, how would you encourage students to major in political science? Well, I think the political science major can be useful in a number of fields. It's not just about going into politics, but that surely is an option for people who are interested in, in that. Po political science is a great major for people who want to be interested in politics. Mm -hmm. And we have a number of 
I've, I've been getting information about internship opportunities with local politicians, which I think are really interesting and helpful. Um, pol political science is a good major for anybody who's interested in law school. Mm -hmm. Political science is actually a pretty good major for business, especially as we get into a more of a global economy. It's, I think it's as important and maybe even more important to understand the political dynamics of world affairs as it is to understand, say, principles of accounting. And so those are three basic reasons mm -hmm. to be a political science major. To me, it's hard because I'm just interested in it. I didn't have to be convinced. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was, OK, I, I'm really interested in politics. I'll major in political science. Then what do I do? Mm -hmm. I couldn't come up with a good answer, so here I am. Do <laughs> you have any suggestions for people who want to get involved in the political process as a whole? Oh, tons. Tons. Okay. Many, many. <laughs> um, the first one is to get, inform get, in get informed. There's, mm -hmm. there's, we have, with the internet and local newspapers, there's just lots of information available out there to any student who wants to, or to anyone who wants to go and look for it. Mm -hmm. um, it's important for people to use more than one source of information because people have their own agendas and people have their own biases. And to be as, to get as information from as many sources as possible, I think helps people get a better understanding of the political system. Um, once you get the information, then there are a number of things people, you can vote, obviously. You can contribute money to political candidates. You can join an interest group that reflects some of your concerns with the political system, and there's any number of interest groups. Getting involved in local issues, attending local meetings about various things. Um, there's just so many ways to get involved. Volunteering for a campaign. Um, that there's no reason for anyone not to be involved if they have the interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, kind of changing the subject, considering the last presidential election, what do you think about election reform? I would have to think about the specific reform. Um, I'm always skeptical about any kind of reform efforts because reforms tend to have unintended consequences. I, do, I, I am concerned that it seems that large contributions seem to have too much influence over the political system. Um, of course, we always need to be vigilant to make sure that there's no fraud in mm -hmm. voting. Um, I like to know where candidates get their money from. I think that's important for any voter to know. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you know, I, I would be, I don't have the answer to how we should mm -hmm. really fix the system. I'm not sure the system is, really needs that much fixing as long as, what really needs to happen is that people really need to pay attention to what's going on and understand what's at stake in the various political debates that are going on. What would you say to young voters who are disenfranchised from the last election and they have a negative attitude now? Um, if you have a negative attitude, I, that's understandable, mm -hmm. but the solution isn't to, to turn away from the process. The solution is to get even more involved mm -hmm. in the process. Um, to be disenfranchised, I think, is to give up a certain amount of power that we have as democratic citizens, and, there's, and that can't accomplish anything. Have you been satisfied with the performance of your students overall? <laughs> some of them. So I, have some very, I have some fine students. Uh, some really students here are as good as students anywhere else. Um, there are some students who could, you know, be a little more serious about their academics. Of course, as an undergraduate, I could have been a little more serious about my academics as well. Mm -hmm. So I understand that as well. I have another question about the last election. Do you think the outcome of how it turned out would inspire people to get more involved in voting? Probably not, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but that's, again, I don't think a good reason not mm -hmm. to get more involved. Um, I think the last election, well, I have my opinions about, about all that. I think the problem was all the lawyers got involved in it before they actually finished. I, they should have counted the votes and mm -hmm. let, let the results stand. But that's, lawyers got involved right away. And mm -hmm. I, I knew, it, once that happened, I knew it wasn't going to be a good result for anybody. Mm -hmm. I know this has been talked about a lot in the media, but what do you think about the tragic events that took place in New York and Washington? Um, I had a lot of thoughts about that. Um, my family still lives, most of my family still live close by. Um, and certainly they know people who have been directly touched by that tragedy. Um, it was a real shock to me, like, mm -hmm. like it was to many people. Um, it shows us that we really are, in a way that we've never been before in our history, vulnerable right. to an attack. Um, even we haven't, we haven't had any kind of real hostilities on 
the con in the continental United States since the War of 1812. And Pearl Harbor, though, was a big shock, was at the time not really part of the United States in the way that New York is now, and that such a tragedy could be inflicted on us, um, I think really makes, us, makes everyone feel a lot less secure. What is your opinion on the U.S.'s war against terrorism? Well, it's, a, it's outside of my field of expertise, mm -hmm. so I'm speaking here as <laughs> just a citizen like everybody else. Um, it's gonna, I think it's going to take a long time. I'm not sure that you'll ever completely be able to declare victory. Mm -hmm. As long as, I mean, it, it, one of the things that the events of September 11th show is that it only takes, you know, one person who is sick enough, I guess, um, to do a lot of damage. And, and it's, and it's you'll, you never, you'll never fully escape from that kind of danger. Um, I'm, I think getting bin Laden and bringing him to justice is important. I don't think that's the end of it. I'm almost pos I'm positive that won't be the end of it. Do you think that this will inspire people to pay more attention to foreign affairs? It should. I think it has. Um, I don't know if that will continue, but for the time being, it certainly has. Mm -hmm. Even in my classes, I detected a bit more interest in not in state and local government, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> but in, in other classes, I certainly have picked up a lot more interest. Interestingly enough, philosophy, the philosophy students seem to be much more engaged in this, mm -hmm. what's going on with this mm -hmm. than, than in my other classes. Um, but it certainly, I think, has encouraged people to pay more attention to things that are going on outside of their own backyards. This is such an unconventional word. Do you think the U.S. can truly be successful? Um, Yes. If we're not looking for 100%, mm -hmm. yes. I think we can certainly go a long way. We don't know, right, how many times intelligence services have stopped terrorist attacks. Yeah, we true. don't know. I mean, it's hard to prove a negative in a sense. Would it have happened if we hadn't done this? It's hard to say. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, they may be successful in limiting attacks that would have otherwise happened, but it will be, it will be impossible to find evidence for that. Mm -hmm. Besides the recent events, what are the biggest issues facing our nation? Why? Um, I think the biggest issue facing our nation is something we've talked about already, which is lack of engagement in politics. Um, more than anything else, I, I see that people turning away from politics, even from a level of self-interest, that people aren't even willing to defend their own self-interest in the political world, I think, is a serious issue that confronts us. Um, I'm concerned about global warming. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about free trade. I think free trade is happening. There's nothing we can do to stop it, but we need to recognize what that means for us. Um, there are just so many things that, that people should be paying attention to that are going on. The world is changing very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And people need to prepare themselves, and we need to prepare our political system to meet those, to face those changes. What do you think about the state of our economy? I think the economy will come back. I'm not an economist. It always <laughs> does. <laughs> um, you know, I think this recession is, in, was inevitable. We had a long mm -hmm. period of, of a very, of, of a lot of growth and so, a, so, and we'll come back, we always have. Do you think the tax rebate was fiscally responsible? I enjoyed getting my check, <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit that. Um, I'm not sure it was something that we needed right away, but, mm -hmm. um, I don't know enough. I, you know, yes, I, I think it was fiscally responsible. I'm not sure that some of these other tax cuts are. Um, I would surely like to see a lot more of the surplus used to pay down the debt because we continue to pay interest on that debt, whether mm -hmm. we have a budget deficit or not. And that would be something that would, I, you know, again, as a, as a father of a young daughter, I would like mm -hmm. to have, a, have her not have to be burdened with such a heavy national debt. Um, does the does the giving money and putting money in people's pockets stimulate the economy? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Was it enough? Was it fiscally responsible? I, that I don't really know. Okay. Do you think interest groups have too much power in politics? Yes. <laughs> How so? Um, I just covered this in American government today and, and last week, actually. I think interest groups, tend by focusing on one issue, um, tend to distort the political process. Mm -hmm. um, they 
most people, most regular people, I think, are concerned about a large number of issues. But an interest group will get in there and focus on one specific issue and sometimes gets people to forget, you know, you may be interested in, in say, gun control, but there are lots of other things that are important to you. Mm -hmm. And by focusing too much on interest groups, we lose sight of all those other things that are important to regular people. I think interest groups, by their nature, um, turn people off to the political system because they are so quite obviously special interests and not the interests of regular people like you and me. Mm -hmm. What have you learned about local politics since moving to Arkansas? <laughs> um, a lot. <laughs> I've, it's hard for me to, that's a hard question to answer because I'm not sure what you're looking for exactly. Well, just any specific. For example, the things of. you've learned to teach our state and local class. Oh, okay. Well, we've talked about <laughs> statewide politics. Um, well, I've learned, I've learned a great deal. I've learned that the poultry industry is an important industry in Arkansas. <laughs> I've learned that there are economic issues that are facing people in this area, specifically with plant closings, mm -hmm. um, that I'm not sure that our politicians are doing much about. Um, these, these roads are important, I've learned that. <laughs> yes. uh, people worry a lot about roads here. Um, just any number of issues that are important. But again, because there's been no election, it's been mm -hmm. hard to really, mm -hmm. it seems, Arkansas is facing a, something of a little bit of a budget crisis now, and yes. that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. How hard has it been finding this information, and have students been helpful? <laughs> students have been helpful. Um, again, I teach state and local government. A, a lot of students in that class have been really great in mm -hmm. terms of getting information and really giving me the lay of the land. I learned all kinds of things about local politics that I don't think I would have gotten from any newspaper. <laughs> how true is it? I don't know. Um, but students, but students really do seem to know a surprising amount about local politics mm -hmm. here, which I think is great, because um, local politics is one of the best ways to get involved. Have you gotten involved with any local civic organizations? Not yet, no. Okay. Are you active on campus with political organizations or any clubs? Well, I'm the advisor for the Pre-Law Society, Pi Alpha Delta. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get our chapter reestablished on campus. That's not really a political organization. Um, Dean Watt and I have emailed, or he's emailed me, I should email him back because I do intend to do this, to starting a political, a club that's focused on politics on campus. There's actually a little bit of, they ha there used to be one, there's a little bit of money in an account. Um, I think that would be a really good thing to do. Uh, it's something I've just been very busy this semester getting started. Have you ever considered running for office? Well, <laughs> yes, but it's, then I thought about it more carefully and I realized it was a bad idea. I'm not interested at all in running for office. Okay. It's just not something that I really want to do. Well, obviously, politics is a hobby of yours. What other hobbies do you have? Um, politics isn't a hobby. It's it isn't what a hobby. I do. It's my life. Um, you don't enjoy it? I do enjoy it, but I enjoy my work very mm -hmm. much. My other hobbies, um, I like listening to music, mm -hmm. playing with my daughter, <laughs> um, reading. I read and you know, do a lot of recreational reading. Those are the big. I like cooking. I think cooking is my other, other main pastime. Hmm. I think those are the three things that I do more than anything else. Well, Dr. Babbitt, we want to thank you for being here today, and thank you for watching. The SAU Report is a production of broadcast journalism students in the Department of Theater and Mass Communication at Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia.